Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog channel. I really wanted to get this first trimester video up for you guys and like a recap because I'm officially in my second trimester. I am 14 weeks and two days. Baby is the size of a lemon and I'm really excited to be on the first trimester. I'm still having some symptoms now, but I'll tell you guys about that later. So I'm gonna show you guys some of my favorite products, things I recommend, some um, random things like you don't have to buy, but I would, you know, check it out if you're interested. First trimester, we found out I was pregnant when I was six weeks pregnant, and then we had my first appointment when I was eight weeks. So you guys can go to the vlog channel. Oh no, you're on the vlog channel. You guys can go to the announcement video and it shows you guys um, us going to the ultrasound. No. I was pretty freaking nauseous in the beginning. And I had a lot of like aversions. Like I really wanted to eat grilled chicken, veggie, vegetables. I really wanted to eat grilled chicken, vegetables, you know, stay on my healthy route because I'm usually a pretty healthy eater. But uh, the thought of grilled chicken with just minimum seasoning grossed me out. And I tried to eat it and I just could not, ugh, it was just gross. Now I'm a little bit better. I just try to do it in a different way. Like um, tonight, I'm gonna try chicken breast again, but I'm gonna get it with like panko breadcrumbs and stuff like that, just to kind of make it more appetizing. I know it's kind of crazy, but I used to be obsessed with grilled chicken, but I had to take a step back um, in my first trimester because it was grossing me out. Another thing too, like I could eat grilled chicken sandwiches, but not just grilled chicken. Like I couldn't take it the super healthy route. Same with vegetables. Vegetables really grossed me out. But I was obsessed with fruits. Still I'm obsessed with fruits. Mainly strawberries and grapes. I like both red and green grapes. I haven't gained that much weight um, so far in my pregnancy. I only gained probably a couple pounds. Maybe three, four pounds. So that's good. I'm also, now that I'm in my second trimester, trying to watch what I eat, eat more oatmeal, um, get my eggs back in. Eggs was another thing I could not eat at all. What was another thing? Once I found out I was pregnant, I'm going to kind of go all over the place I, and then I'll answer some of your questions at the very end because I'm just trying to remember. I have a terrible memory, so whatever comes to mind, I'm just going to tell you. But another aversion I had was coffee. So this started about... I would say a week after I found out, so my about six and a half weeks, I just did not want coffee anymore. There was something about the thought of coffee that I just did not want it anymore in my first trimester. So I went like a good month, almost month and a half without coffee, which is crazy if you know me. You know I love my coffee. For someone who used to get like venti cold brews, shit like that, I mean, I was so surprised I didn't want coffee. But the thought of it just was not appealing to me. I did not want it at all. So then I had headaches um, because I wasn't getting like any caffeine like as much as I wanted. I do track my caffeine. By the way, if you drink coffee or caffeinated drinks, track it. I just now started drinking coffee about maybe a week and a half ago. So I'm back on it now. But it kind of was good for me to take that break because I go to Starbucks and I get a tall instead of like a venti now because A, I don't wanna waste all my caffeine on a coffee, but B, I don't feel like it's necessary for me to have a cold brew or a super tall coffee anymore. Like I feel like it's just too much for me. A tall is perfect. And then I have one cup of the Starbucks iced coffee in the mornings and I'm totally fine for the rest of the day. So I'm not so much of a coffee addict anymore. I still love it when I wake up in the morning. It just kind of like boosts my mood and and it makes it look makes you look forward to something in the morning but for a while there I didn't have any coffee it was just water in that first trimester I was feeling a little bit nauseous and it mainly started getting pretty bad at eight weeks and I could tell I wasn't feeling well and Davis could too because if this sounds dumb but if I fall asleep on the couch I'm not feeling good okay and I fell asleep on the couch a ton. It's just something that I I don't really like falling asleep on the couch because I wake up, I get all hot, I'm uncomfortable. Like if I'm gonna go to bed, I'm just gonna go upstairs. But whew, I had a lot of sleeping naps on this couch. One thing I did try um, is Preggy Pops. And I did have one, they taste pretty good, at least the one that I had. But I will say <laughs> after that one, um, when I would get nauseous again and I thought about taking one, it would make me like grossed out and nauseated. So that happened a lot with me where I would want something one day and then the next day, like I would have it in my fridge and I'd be like, that's disgusting. It was terrible. But yeah, a lot of people have said the preggy pops work for them, but I just, I don't know why I couldn't stomach them. 
it was weird. I had so many different food issues. I went through a biscuit phase, especially when we were in Georgia. I needed a biscuit. It was just so good. I missed my biscuits actually. <laughs> My meals just really changed depending on what I wanted, and I had to have carbs. When I was feeling so nauseous, the one thing that made me feel so much better is carbs. I'm talking like rice, any kind of carb I can get, a piece of bread, I mean, whatever. It made me feel so much better. That, and then I could stomach fruit for like the longest time. I've been drinking lots of water, nothing too unusual there, because I drink a lot of water before pregnancy, but I've also been drinking a lot during. When I first got pregnant, about my eight week mark, I was really drinking Gatorades too because I couldn't stomach water. It was just too plain. So, um, and when I was feeling nauseous, the last thing I wanted was water. So I would get some Gatorades or Powerades, Powerade Zeros, and kind of alternate with them with the water, you know, like when I needed it. And then I'm kind of going through a phase now where I can drink a lot of the plain water, but I do like to add lemon to it just to kind of ease my stomach. I can't have too much lemon water because it gives me like acid reflux or something. It just doesn't work out, but I do like it in my water sometimes if I just need a taste for something different. I haven't really been working out mainly because I have such low energy still. My energy's low. I am tired all the time. I want to get up and start working out. I'm just trying not to be too hard on myself about it. I'm trying to just like listen to my body and relax when I need to relax and try to get everything else that needs to get done in the day done, you know, because I'm busy too. I mean, I have two businesses I have to take care of. You know, I listen to my body and if I don't go work out, I don't go work out. I'm going to try as best as I can. Like I have to leave for out of town tomorrow and come back Friday. If you watch my videos, you know I love working out and I've hated not working out. I've definitely lost muscle. Um, so I'm wanting to get back and get into walking or doing some band workouts, not necessarily lifting a lot of weights or anything like that because I just want to take it easy because it's been so long since I've worked out. I'm going to talk to you guys about um, just different products I've been using too. So the prenatals I've been using are this Garden of Life Vitamin Code Raw Prenatals. I saw a lot of mixed reviews, which there's always going to be mixed reviews on pregnancy stuff. So always ask your doctor. Um, my doctor is good with the products that I have. Always ask your doctor because there's so many different reviews. Everybody is different and everybody has an opinion on something. So just ask. But these have been really good for me. I've been taking them three times a day, which is what the um, bottle says to take. And they're just a raw prenatal with raw whole food multivitamins and nutritional support for mom and baby. They're vegetarian, non-GMO, gluten-free, raw, and dairy-free. Take one capsule three times daily, and I'm almost out of this one. I actually had to order another one yesterday, so I'll be getting another one in soon. They're not cheap. They're super expensive, but I think it's important to take care of yourself and baby. Another thing, too, that I've been using for my body is this Burt's Bees Mama Bee Nourishing Body Oil with Vitamin E. So I got this the moment I found out I was pregnant. I watched so many pregnancy videos and like recommendations, newborn recommendations, diaper videos. I've watched them all. And uh, this was really recommended. So I just got one of them. I'm almost out and I've been using it ever since. It's really good, very hydrating. I do have another one that I ordered from Amazon that I'm gonna try out too. But if it doesn't work out well, I will go back to this one. But so far, I mean, I'm not super big or anything. So I don't have any stretch marks right now, but it's important to just keep it moisturized and prepare for the growing tummy, you know what I mean? Okay, this one I'm gonna look into a little bit more, but I'm starting to use this pink grapefruit acne prone skin. One of the symptoms I've had is like major breakouts on my chest and my back. They have been brutal, brutal, and they just happened within the last couple of weeks. I've had body acne before on my back, but I've never had it on my chest, and this is like just textured skin all over. It's just terrible. I had a proactive body wash, but then a lot of you were like, no, you don't use that. So I'm going to ask my doctor when I go see her at the end of this month, but right now I'm just going to use this. I read that you can use some over-the-counter stuff, and this seemed like it didn't have too much. According to like what I read, a lot of people recommended just using an over-the-counter thing. So this is a Neutrogena Pink Grapefruit Acne Prone Skin Activated Cream to Foam Cleanser. I just wipe this all over my body and then wash it off, obviously. I haven't used it for too long. I can't tell you if I see a difference, but I'm trying it out and seeing if that will help. I know a lot of people have said that they have had acne until they gave birth. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens to me, but you know, I'm trying to tame it while I can. 
so I'm gonna try that out. Another thing I recommend when you first find out you're pregnant is getting a baby book. So that's what I did. I went on Amazon and I got this bump to birthday pregnancy and first year journal. So this is gonna include your pregnancy, also the first year of your baby. I'm finally in the second trimester portion like these right here that you can see these little stick on pictures for christmas i actually got this little polaroid camera printer or like film printer i guess it's called i got this from davis because i've always wanted one and these stick to items so like i have the pictures stuck to this just to kind of decorate it and make it different but we've found that this is so cool to use for the baby book like you could take selfies doing whatever include it in the baby book and it just makes it different and it makes it a little bit more fun you have like visuals with everything and like what you were doing so like i have a picture of davis and i army navy and then snow that we got that week um just a bunch of different things that you can put in it and use it for so i really recommend getting something like this if you get a book even if it's not this book because it just it's really cute and if you take a lot of pictures and want to include them like in an album this is the perfect way to do that i did not know if i should get one of these in the first trimester because i thought it was like a super late in your pregnancy type of thing but let me tell you this has saved my sleep okay so this is what mine looks like it has like the circle up at the top and then the open legs so it cuddles your back and cuddles your um, belly at the same time now some people might not need this so early on but i am a tummy sleeper so before i was pregnant i always slept on my tummy it just oh, there's something so soothing about sleeping on your stomach <laughs> always hated sleeping on my side and my back but especially my sides so now that i'm pregnant and i have to sleep on my sides this has been so good i was using a pillow between my legs for a really long time but it just wasn't that comfortable, but I tried sucking it up because I was like, I don't know if this will make it any better because I'm not enjoying the pillow. Like, what is going to help? But this has helped so much with me being comfortable at night. I love that I have a pillow at, at the top um, for my head. And then I also love that I have the back support as well. And it's just a full body pillow. It's so good. Get it. If you're struggling with sleeping in your first trimester, get yourself a pregnancy pillow. This was a gift from Davis <laughs> for Christmas. And then another gift that I got from him was actually one of those inflatable. It kind of looks like one of those pool floaties pool floats but it has a circle cut out for your tummy and you can lay down on your stomach so when i get a little bit bigger we're gonna blow that thing up and i'm gonna <laughs> lay on my stomach for a little bit we've done so much research on like what diapers to use what wipes what's needed for newborns what's not and just different things like that but of course everybody has different opinions and when it's your first kid you usually go a little bit overboard everybody says that and i think it's totally fine you got to figure it out your way am i right you know we're gonna do the nursery upstairs in davis's office and then i'm gonna have like a little area down here in this corner where um i can do like a quick change and stuff like that like a little changing table nothing crazy and like a slider or a glider what are they called mm -hmm. i'm gonna have one of those down here because i'm always downstairs only time i'm upstairs is if i'm like filming or sleeping and otherwise i'm always downstairs so i wanted a little area over there nothing crazy just like you know diapers and stuff all down here well, that's what's going on davis is building the crib a lot of you think it's cool and a lot of you are like what he's building the crib but we found plans um online that we really really love it's such a cute crib we'll show you guys the process of him doing it and when it's done it's adorable and of course we're gonna make sure it is completely safe for the child if it's not safe for the child it's not going in there i know davis will make sure that it is perfect and that is the one thing that he is building for the nursery and i'm so excited for it if you guys want any other baby videos let me know also i want to say this because there's been a lot of controversy on the snapchat or not snapchat the instagram video that i posted so we do have two registries i did a boomerang when we left one store saying like we did a registry here so fun um finally got it done whatever not thinking that people will go buy the stuff but i haven't given anyone links but i do want to say i had a few rude comments kind of come in saying um, they couldn't believe that I accept these gifts and they couldn't believe that I had a registry. Um, one person said that I basically didn't deserve a registry because I have plenty of money and all this other stuff, which no one knows my finances. But another thing too is I don't think there's anything wrong with having a registry and we have one for a to keep track of the things that we want and we need and b for our friends and family like we're gonna have a baby shower we're gonna do things like that because we're gonna be buying those a lot like diapers and wipes we did put a few like 
bouncy things on there and stuff that would be really nice to get as gifts but of course you know if nobody bought that for us we would definitely buy it ourselves and we would get it then um, because you can go through and just add it all to your cart since it's on your registry and then you're good to go I do want to put this out there again we are so grateful for those of you who found a registry and did send it in um, I've got all the thank you cards going out. I really do appreciate it. You don't have to. We never ask for any of you to get us anything. A lot of you asked if I had a P.O. box because you wanted to send something. We do not have a P.O. box. I, I don't want you to think you have to spend your money to send us anything ever. But we're definitely allowed to have a registry. I just thought it was crazy to me that people were like, you don't deserve to have a registry or anything because you should go buy it all yourself. I was like, it's a little harsh. It's so much easier to have a registry and add everything to your cart. So when you're about to have baby like a few months before and you want to go ahead and buy everything, you just add it all to cart and buy it. That's it. Yeah, don't feel like you have to buy us anything. You never have to buy us anything. I want to put that out there because people were coming in hordes. Someone asked weirdest craving. I don't really have weird cravings. Like I know some people say they crave like pickles with mayo or some crazy stuff like that. I've never craved anything like that. I think I've just been craving like, you know, fruits, sweets, and things like that. Also, a lot of people were asking where we're going to find out the gender. We are going to find out the gender. Um, we know we can do it early. We know we can go to all these different places, get blood drawn, blah, blah, blah. But we are waiting until March because Davis is going to be gone for training um, in February. So we're having to wait a little bit longer to find out and announce the gender. But March will be the time that we find it out. It's going to be hard to wait an extra whole month but that's what Davis wants to do so we're just gonna wait a little bit longer and then we'll know oh my gosh another thing is orange juice I had orange juice one day and it fucked me up oh my gosh it made me so awful I felt like my insides just were gross I had one container of orange juice and I literally thought I was going to vomit everywhere I went and saw the nurse uh, for like a, just a regular checkup and she was just randomly mentioning about how she had orange juice and it messed her up and ever since she hasn't been able to drink it and I was like I'm never drinking orange juice again until after pregnancies because I love mimosas and I can't be without mimosas so no more orange juice until after pregnancy a lot of people are asking are you nervous about how your dogs will react to the baby once he she is here definitely not I think they're gonna love it they love babies in general like if people have a child over they just love it um toddlers not so much <laughs> but babies they love um especially Daisy she just senses it like she just smells the baby and she's like what are you doing especially if it's in the car seat she like rocks it a little bit I think they'll be perfectly fine Rose will just be like what is this this is a child that they'll um grow up with I think they'll be perfectly fine uh names any ideas hints we're not gonna tell any names or any hints until baby is born so it says have you had to buy any maternity clothes yet if so from where I haven't had to buy any maternity clothes one thing is my leggings so you guys know I love the lululemon align and wonder unders the wonder unders are my absolute favorite but I noticed since being pregnant it just cuts into my stomach so bad because they're more compression type leggings I've been switching over to the aligns from lululemon because I have a bunch of them upstairs and they're way more comfortable but I did have to size up in them like I got one more pair recently um sized up because it just was starting to get tight on my stomach and it just was feeling uncomfortable and like leaving lines in my tummy. I did have to size up but I haven't had to buy any maternity things. Davis did buy me maternity leggings for Christmas so when I do need maternity leggings I've got them on deck. One thing is <laughs> I really should have had different kinds of denim because all of my denim is like high-waisted and literally once I was about seven weeks pregnant I couldn't fit into my high-waisted jeans anymore because I liked my jeans tight and super high rise and then once you get pregnant it's like you get bloated and you can't fit into them anymore and it's just a mess and I really don't have any other jeans so that's one thing I need to buy is jeans but I think I just need to up in size and not get maternity ones yet mm, a lot of people asked what I did to ease the nausea and my doctor actually put me on some medicine so if you're really bad to the point where you feel like you can't get through the day with that nausea and you can't get work done Definitely tell your doctor because mine did recommend me some medicine, but I had to stop taking it because it would just make me so incredibly tired again, like pass out angry tired because I would want to get stuff done, but I would feel sick. So I would take the medicine and then I would pass out. I had to quit taking that too. And now if I get nauseous, I just kind of like 
rough it out unless it gets bad and then I'll take one and be like, all right, I'm done for the day. I had some medicine prescribed from my doctor. <laughs> Has your pregnancy helped with your skin? You look like you're glowing. I don't see the glow that anyone sees. I don't feel like I'm glowing at all. I feel just dry, cracked, crusty, you know? <laughs> Someone said, are lip fillers and Botox on hold while you're pregnant? 100% I am not getting Botox or lip fillers now that I'm pregnant. <laughs> It's just not happening. It's gonna be on hold for a little while, especially when the baby comes. It's still gonna be on hold. So I have not had anything done. I didn't even have anything done like when I was pregnant, like even before I knew. It's been a while since I've had anything done actually. But my wrinkles are coming in hot. That's how you know I haven't had Botox because my wrinkles are here and they're here for a little while. So I hope you like them. <laughs> Someone said, how was waiting for your eight week appointment? I'm three weeks from mine and I'm so anxious. I hated having to wait to eight weeks, but I totally get why you have to eight, wait to eight weeks. That's why we didn't tell our family because family was down for Thanksgiving and I wasn't eight weeks yet. I didn't have an appointment. Daisy, I have like your hair in my mouth. I didn't have an appointment and I didn't have an ultrasound and I wanted to make sure that we had an ultrasound before we even remotely thought about telling family just because I would feel more comfortable like that. But yeah, it was so nerve wracking. I was just sitting there hoping and praying that there was still a baby in my tummy. And um, I remember even when I took the pregnancy test and I went to call my OB to make an appointment and they still said like, you have to get a lab pregnancy test. I was even nervous then, but yeah, we, I had to get a lab before I could even get an appointment. So that made me nervous. And they were like, you have to wait three to five business days to find out. Well, they ended up calling the next day, telling me I was pregnant. And then I just had that same nervousness until the first appointment. So I even have that now. Like even just waiting till the next appointment, I'm just always like sitting here thinking like, I hope everything's good. I hope everything's going according to plan. I hope I'm not messing anything up. I hope the baby's doing well. Like I, I think about it a lot too. I feel like you'll always be anxious. Maybe it's just me though. <laughs> Maybe that's just the kind of person I am. I'm just so nervous about everything. And uh, even now having to wait till the end of January for my next ultrasound I'm like are you sure maybe I should get a Doppler <laughs> so I have been looking into that though like getting a Doppler uh, I'm sorry if I have this hair on my mouth but it's definitely daisies yeah so I've been looking to get a Doppler too just to kind of like ease your mind because I know a lot of girls do that to like hear the heartbeat and make sure everything is good last question is someone asked if I'm planning to breastfeed a hundred percent I pray that I can breastfeed I know there's some women out there that can, that can't. There's a lot that goes into it. And um, I know I've heard that it's painful. I've heard so many stories and I just pray that I can. I know to stick with it, even if it gets hard. I'm just hoping so. But I also would never shame anyone for going to formula if they couldn't breastfeed. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why that's a thing that blows my mind. There is no sense in mom shaming others. So, and yeah, I'm just hoping it all works out. And I know I have to stick to it. You know what I mean? Cause I know some people said it took them a while and like they had to see lactation consultants and stuff. So I'm definitely gonna do that if I'm having issues. I'm not gonna just give up. I'm gonna try my hardest. But I hope it's like some of these other people that it's like easy peasy. They just latch and you go. <laughs> but we will see. So I hope you guys enjoyed this first trimester recap. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your love, your support. I appreciate you. Um, feel free to follow me on Instagram and stuff. I'll have it linked in the um, end card of this. And it's always linked down below as well. We'll have a vlog next, I promise. We'll have a vlog next. Right, my girls? All right, perfect. Okay, bye, guys.